Salutations everybody, Dimforge back with another Battle Brother basic video. Today we talk about perks and leveling, or should I say general ideas how you would level certain roles in your company. Very epic music in the background. <laughs> yeah, because this will be epic, of course, right? Yeah, I just will jump into, I'm not sure, oh, I'm sorry, not, not ready to new, that's for the next video. <laughs> I just picked one of my playthroughs of higher level bros, so you can actually see what certain things do. We'll just go over them. This is like the tiers, you know. Every level until the level of 11, you get one perk point to spend. And when you spend, like, let's say in tier 1, one perk point, the next time you get into the next row, into the next row, into the next row, you can't just say, you know what, I wait five levels and then just only, only pick stuff here. You can't do this, so you have to do this in the in the order from up to down basically yeah, i will go over all the perks now i will talk about the use if you should use it for what purpose most perks they have maybe somewhat of a niche use i don't use every perk i play on the highest difficulties i play iron man i just want to have things that are reliable this is, a, of course, an opinionated video. I mean, I will have opinion about certain perks. Other people will have other opinions. Some people think that certain perks are great. Maybe I think they're not great. This is one area where I will be coming from. It should be reliable. And the other area is Battle Brothers is to some degree a DPS race. If you can kill your enemies faster than they, than they kill you, then you win. That's basically how this game works, especially in the later stages. Or if you are able to route the enemies, this basically kills them, then you win the fight too. I will put more emphasis on dealing damage and killing stuff and hitting than in being more defensive because in the long run I feel being more offensive, being more aggressive, having the bros that actually kill stuff will just result in winning battles. So hello, this is the smallest claim I had to edit in. For you this may be just two seconds later, for me it's two days later. <laughs> yeah, those videos take a long time to make. But I had to say something to explain the usage of perks and what is my reasoning behind. I get messages from people or when I stream they talk to me and some of them they tend to dislike certain things. I just mentioned that I like reliable perks and I don't like gambling. And I like things that do damage and not debuffing. But there is a reason for this. The reason is, I play on the highest difficulties, I always play random, I have always an unexplored map, and I play on Iron Man. So my goal with all my builds and my perk usage, that I want to make every situation, regardless how bad it is, regardless how bad the fights are, regardless how bad your bros are, regardless how good you can get gear in the early game. I try to make any run I get work. I just pick one random seed and I try to make it work. This is what I feel is fun for me. My usage for perks or the judgment of them, they come from this place. Is this perk good enough? Can this perk carry the weight of the randomness of bad situations happening, of losing your best role in, you know, one of the earliest fights? How can you make that work? So the good thing about this, if this works in that environment, it works in any environment. I choose the perks because they're reliable, they're not gambling, they do damage, they kill stuff and they're not debuffing because those things work in random environments regardless of the circumstances. And this is why I value or dislike certain perks. Sorry for the small interruption but I had to say this to make this more clear. I didn't really explain this very well. Have fun, enjoy the perk review. Alright. Pass adaptation. This is one of the hatch up perks. You have a bro that is not good in hitting, but he is supposed to be hitting. You take this not on end game bros, you take this on early game bros <clears throat> that are, have very bad chance to hit. They, they can fulfill their role, right? A stunner that is able to hit, maybe, maybe a bad damage dealer or something like this. Crippling strikes. I never use this. I feel it is nice to injure people, but it's even nicer to kill people. You can cripple somebody and maybe he has, I don't know, minus to his fatigue, but killing him is just a better idea. And there are other perks who are more damage focused and I would always take them over this. It's not as reliable than other things, right? This is the reason I, I basically never take this. 
The losses, I almost have this on every build. It's an absolute amazing perk, it's very reliable. You can even patch up bros that are not have as much HP. Losses, in my opinion, are no-brainer, especially on the higher difficulties, right? And especially early on. This is, for every frontliner, my first pick. <laughs> Nine lives is a patch up perk too. If you take this on bros that are just there to survive your classical meat shields, I call them soldiers. Sometimes you have a bro who has very bad defenses, but you kind of want to have him in, a, in the front line. Then you give him nine lives. This is sometimes better than having this, because he will survive the one swing that would kill him 100% of the time. And all the debuffs like poisons or bleeds, they all are gone. This, is, uh, this got buffed even recently, so it's even better now. Max and builds, there are certain builds like Taskmaster, your classical bannerman I feel is very good for this. All my throwers have that, my gunner have this, my thunderer. And some people take this for their tanks. I feel this is a pretty cool perk for more specialized builds. Basically there to, to just do more things like throw pots, like throw nets. Some people take tanks with this, and then, then they have like four shields in, in, in the inventory. The cool thing about bags and belts is, if you take this, the last two or the new two slots you have in the inventory, they don't take up fatigue at all. So Pretty cool when you have a lot of those shields, you know, this doesn't count to your fatigue. Pathfinder, a lot of my bros have Pathfinder. I think only the very defensive ones and my throwers, they don't have this. I would love to have this on every bow possible. <laughs> you really want this, especially if you have maps like my map seed that I play right now. There's a lot of forests and a lot of swamps and this is just absolutely crazy. On top of that, you just spare that little bit of extra fatigue and you can swing more. You don't stem out as fast. This is an absolutely amazing perk. I love this perk. Every melee fighter, you see every one of them has that. Everyone. This is how good this is, okay? Pathfinder, big great. <laughs> Take that. Adrenaline, I feel I use very rarely or not at all lately. I feel it's just a way too crazy amount of fatigue burn. I had one playthrough where I had four throwers as cultists. And I used it against goblins and was, it was absolutely beautiful, but they were stamped out after two rounds. So you just go and press adrenaline and then you throw with all your four throwers on goblins and you kill like seven or eight of them. It's kind of cool. I like that. But other than that, I don't like it. It could be a very strong early game thing if you have just bros that you know you will not keep. Acting first is very strong. I mean, if you kill somebody before he can hit this, I mean, it kind of explains itself, you know. Kind of cool perk, but I rarely use it because it costs a lot of fatigue. Recover is, you just recover 50% of your fatigue in one turn. It doesn't matter how much you have. This is very good on tanks. They just stand there, they spam indom, they spam shield or whatever, and then there's this one turn, he can't continue and then you recover one turn it's a sketchy turn you know for example <laughs> but then he can he can do his job some people have this on certain bros like bloodwing cleaver user they could actually use that to some degree some have this on the thrower i feel this is a pretty cool 12 perk i would take <laughs> but i can't really use i mean you completely waste one turn so you need some time in between to use that for tanks this is this is absolutely great for all the other ones, you could use that. Not a bad perk at all, but I don't use it as much. All my tanks have this. Student is a pretty greedy perk. I think a lot of newer players think that they really should use this on every bro because everyone is leveling faster. In theory, that is a good idea, but in practice, a dead bro doesn't level at all, right? So I use this a lot for throwers because they're always in the back. I use this for my bannerman because he's always in the back or my taskmaster. All the backliners, I could see myself using that. Or you just play longer, right? You just got a new bro. He will be in the backline because it's safer there. You can be greedy and get away with this. For this, I think this perk is absolutely crazy. Yeah, great perk, but I would only take this for backliner. Okay, that was the first row. The second row. 
Executioner. 20% more damage is really good. And you get injuries going a lot, to be honest. I have one dedicated bro who always have this. Those are my rogues. Those are the dagger bros. They inflict a lot of injuries themselves. On him, this is absolutely great. But on all the bros, I mean, it's one perk. It can be 20% damage, but especially in the earlier stages of the game, I mean, how much does it really do? Hitting, hitting a raider like two times with this thing here, or I don't know, a nomad, he's dead anyways. I'm not sure if this really does that much of a difference. In theory, this is a very cool perk, but I feel this has more place in mid to late game. Very early on, you just, you just too short almost everything and anyways, if you have the, the appropriate weapons for this. <laughs> and then it's not always clear if you hit the first time, if you really injure that bro, right? Bullseye. When I was a newer player, I took at level 3 this perk instantly for every my range bros. <laughs> then I had a longer, longer talk about this to another player and he just, he just made fun of me. He said this is the worst perk in the game. And now I kind of agree. I never take this. It sounds kind of cool, but in theory, if you really think about that, is it really a good idea to shoot on somebody who is behind, let's say, a shield wall? I don't know. And then it's only 25% less chance to hit that dude. <laughs> this is a terrible idea because it just means that you gamble. It's not reliable. And you probably don't hit that target anyways. I mean, if they would say 25% or 10%, yeah, sure. Then this is this is a completely different story. But I know you maybe have one range, bro. I was actually thinking about taking this on my hawk I built, but it's it is basically an archer. But you want to have clear shots on your on your enemies anyways. This thing doesn't change anything, so I just never take this anyways. Dodge. Dodge is, I feel, when you take this, is an extremely crazy power boost. You are very strong when you have that very early on, especially if you have high amounts of in initiative. You always take this with nimble gear or light gear. And when you take this, again, in the earlier stages, this makes your character very, very strong. He has 40 already, and then he gets 15% of this on top. I mean, this is, um, this is a very powerful perk. What if I mind? This is a great patch-up perk if you have a bro who is really good but he really sucks. When it comes to resolve you can just not level resolve at all and just take this. If you can spare that perk, this works absolutely great. The Taskmaster of course always has this. And if you try to make Fearsome very very good, I will talk about this uh, in a minute. <laughs> then you should take Fortified Mind if you really want to amplify the effectiveness of this because the higher your resolve is, the better Fearsome will work. Resilient, I never take this. This is uh, too defensive for me. I don't know, it's, it sounds kind of cool, but having poison one round less, I don't really care about those things. I don't think this is particularly good. I just don't take this. If you really think about this, bleed effects and stuff like that, sure, they're kind of annoying, but that's how far it goes. And spending one perk and having one round less of this, don't take this perk. Zebra. Zebra I would love to have on every melee bro I have. I have had multiple situations where an absolute amazing bro got all, almost one-tapped by a very bad headshot from a big mace or a berserker chain. Yeah, this is a great tank was fighting orcs and there was one berserker with a chain and he hit him and he had like, I don't know, 105 HP and he hit him for 100 damage. Even though he had this helm with a berserker chain. Getting hit in the head does critical damage and yeah, on top of that you get very, very bad injuries. So this is just not a fun... I know this is a very boring perk, but this in the later stages, this will protect your bros from, from dying. Quick Hands is an amazing perk. If you want to switch your weapons like this, it doesn't cost any, any action. The first time every round. I use this on Rowers, I use this on my Bannerman, I have this on all my Vanguards. I can, I can just switch out this and then have a hit on an enemy that is just one tile away, for example. Or you just switch out, do this, whip somebody or disarm somebody and then it's just absolutely great i i really like this 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 makes this game way way more fun 
Gifted. Gifted is probably the strongest perk in the game. The reason for that is when you take this, you get one extra round of at attributes to spare, right? And they're all max road. So it's like three melee defense. Is the three melee defense you get extra from this, I feel, make this the strongest perk, and then you can patch up like resolve, for example, or give him an extra round of, of hit points. Because melee defense scales indefinitely. Three melee defense more on somebody like him, at some point enemies will only have a chance of 5% to hit. Having this extra melee defense just makes them way more tanky and they just don't get hit. And if you don't get hit, you know what? You win. <laughs> I think Gifted is absolutely amazing. You can skip this if you have very, very strong backgrounds, like, but I play a lot of lowborn peasants and I play a lot of cultists. I don't really have a lot of good bros and I'm always looking forward to level 3 because then I level gifted and this, this gives them like a big stat boost. This is like the Huskal who has an 8 more range attack for example, right? I love gifted. I take this on every bro. So we are in the next row. It's Backstabber. Backstabber is great. It's a patch up perk. It just means that when you fight somebody and there is adjacent somebody to him, you get plus 5% chance to hit. With Backstabber, this effect is doubled. I have this on one row. He was so bad that his melee scale is just not really good. But the rest is kind of cool. I gave him this as a patch up perk. It's very crucial for me to disarm in between. I think this is a very important tool you want to have. At least one or two rows should have this. If you disarm somebody, you always do this in situations where there is danger, right? This is like the orc warrior that is at your host card. You really have to disarm him. And if not, yeah, your host card dies, basically. Then you really want to hit those. And of course, there's always at least one or two bros that's standing beside that. And then you just do this and your chance to hit is yeah not double but you get to crazy degrees and this completely negates the bad melee attack but it's a patch up perk nonetheless sometimes very useful but i rarely use this anticipation anticipation some people think this is complete bullshit i don't feel that way i feel if i skill range defense this actually has an impact it has a little bit to do with how the AI works and how they shoot. Sure, they hit you anyway sometimes, but, you know, missing two or three shots in one round is actually pretty cool. Especially if you fight against marksmen or against goblins, right? In this playthrough, I tried out having this on a lot of my melee guys, and I feel the difference. The further away the enemy is that shoots at you and they tend to be on max range if they can, the more range defense you get. You get at least plus 10. I feel the difference. Maybe I'm crazy. That's absolutely, absolutely possible. Maybe you just don't like it. I like this perk, but I don't take this on every, everybody. I like to have this on, on Taskmaster because, well, they get shot a lot. And you have, I would say, one or two perks that you can use for other things. I like it. Shield Expert. I have this on every tank, obviously. And I have this on earlier level bros. If I have earlier bros, like soldiers, people who just are there to hold the line and they survive until like level 4 or 5, then I take this. Not only this will make the shields not break, which is kind of cool, the knockback effect, like this, has a higher chance to hit. And I use this quite regularly, right? Kicking enemies from higher positions or kicking somebody away who is trying to kill one of your precious bros. I really like this knockback effect, you know, and the small bonus is your shield gives you just more defenses. Brawny means that the armor you wear, the fatigue costs are cut by 30%. This is very important for tanks because they wear the heaviest armor. And if you have a bro, like the conqueror, the ones that are standing in the back and they have berserk frenzy, which none of those dudes has. <laughs> but let's pretend this is the dude with a two-handed weapon, okay? And he has that. It would make sense to take this. Taking Brawny would make that he has more rounds to swing and to double hit each turn. And he doesn't stem out as fast. It's not as much as most people think. But this is very useful because your fatigue will be your bottleneck. On tanks, this is an absolute must. I only take this on bros that are better fought. 
relentless. It is just a perk that when you wait, you get normally a penalty to your initiative. When you then act the next round, this is one thing that makes it not as bad. And the other thing is, if you want to make sure that the bro you use really attacks first. When your user fatigue, your initiative goes down. If you want to be sure that somebody acts first, then Relentless is a perk you can use. But it's very niche. It's only for bros that wear nimble gear and are like duelists or my rogues. They all have this. I kind of have to explain this very briefly. There is a rogue guide for this, obviously. But it, it goes like this. You wait. You wait, you know, one tile away from the target you want to kill. You know, that chosen, that leader, whatever. Then you move in with the vanguard. You bonk him. The vanguard is, of course, slower than he. I mean kind of obvious right he has 100 initiative more <laughs> you go in you bonk that the dang dangerous enemy you give him a debuff or so he gets a lot of damage amplifier and then he jumps in he attacks twice and then the start of the next round because he has this and so much initiative he acts first and is able to hit three times on top of that this is like five attacks with this thing and he has a lot of damage multipliers. It completely demolished everything. This is only possible with Relentless. So for this situation, or you have a duelist, like maybe with the magic swords of the gods, you know, the one with the lightning, this could be maybe a cool thing too. Rotation is, makes it possible that you can switch the place with another bro who is maybe in dangerous situations. I have this on all my soldiers, so I can switch a soldier out if I feel, oh, there's a precious bow. He's in big danger. I just go in and swap the soldier with my precious bow because soldiers can die. The other one, they shouldn't. And this is a perk to make this sure. But if you play correctly, you shouldn't use this too much, right? You kind of should anticipate how the AI works. You get, get like a feeling of what is possible, what isn't, you know, and you, you don't really use this too much. So going to the next, ready the troops. If somebody is routing, then you can wake them up or you can gener generally speaking if you fight against alps you can wake them up like literally that's a pretty cool perk on one bro your taskmaster your banner man has this if there's even one ambition you fulfill then you get this this cool sergeant sash you want to have this once i love to give my tanks taunt i feel this is an amazing tool it just makes fighting way more easy it, it depends a little bit of how you like to play I love to have my tanks in my near surroundings of my company. Then taunt is pretty cool. It just makes it that the target you taunt with this will attack you. So this is like one dangerous foe. You know, you can just taunt them. You can even taunt Necrosavans and then they port to you, which is kind of cool. You can make cool plays with that. But if that target is not able to reach you, then they will ignore this. Pretty cool tool. I like this. All the weapon masteries. I just go over this very briefly. Yes, on stunners, it makes that your mace, the knockout is a second attack, actually stuns to 100% chance, and the less buildup is really good. So it's good for mace users and for stunners. Flail mastery. If you use flails, this is absolute, This is very cool. It makes the second attack that only hits heads, ignores shields too, which is absolutely massive, and the less fatigue is really great. So for flail users, yes. Hammer Mastery, I take this on Destroyer because use a lot, lot of Shatter. For normal Hammer Bros, I don't think you have to use that. X Mastery is, I feel, the, the weakest of the Masteries. It's nice, but I always would, would prefer taking other things, so it's not really that useful in my opinion. Round String is very gimmicky. You take this maybe when you get grip from snakes or something, so no. I don't like this. This is a must for every cleaver user because cleavers, they cause a lot of fatigue. And the second thing is disarming with the whip. Yeah, a whip is a cleaver in this game. The disarm penalty is not as bad. Sword mastery. I think this is fine if you have this the swords of the gods and one duelist and it should be okay, but it's not a big deal. Maybe you use repost a lot. I, I just don't. I don't like sword mastery. Dagger Mastery, I only use this in one situation. I use this with a Kartal Dagger and a Rogue can attack three times in one turn, which is absolutely crazy. Polar Mastery, I only use this on one bro type, which is the 
Phoenix or the Dawnbreaker. This is a backliner who doesn't really have that much melee defense, but he has amazing offensive capabilities. I use this, but only for the 25% less fatigue build-up. Yeah. It is nice to move two tiles and then hit, but you can just use the Jagged Pike. Do I have one here? Yeah, I have. Jagged Pikes have this already. Sure, this thing doesn't hit as crazy, but I mean... You can move to tiles and attack even without this thing, so I don't think this is a great. Spear Mastery, I feel, is an absolute meme. There are some meme builds that try to utilize Spear Wall, but this <laughs> doesn't work in my opinion. I never use this. I use for Gunner, like my Thunderer. Are they actually? Yeah. My Thunderer, they have this. Reload and fire in one turn. If you don't have this, you can't. I don't really use only crossbow for that. I wouldn't use this. I only use this for, for Gunner, for Thunderer. Yeah, bows are not in a good place, so I don't really use that. There's one b build that has this. Kind of nice to shoot one range further. Um, the Hawkeye, but this is a very specific build. It's very niche -y, and I mean, you're absolutely fine without it. I So I don't really use this. Yeah, throwing mastery is absolutely amazing. They even nerfed that. It was 40% extra damage. Every one of my... <laughs> they're kind of mixed up. <laughs> yes. Every one of my host cards has this. This is an amazing thing. This makes... This makes those javelins hit very hard. Especially if you have King Frenzy up and combine this with Duelist. Great perk. Every thrower has this. Amazing. Reach advantage. This is a more of a defensive perk, but I'm more of a fan of being offensive, like routing enemies and killing enemies, so I don't really have that. There will be one bro type, it is a destroyer, it's a two-handed wielding bro that protects your flanks. He will have this. Kind of cool, but only for this. But other than that, I don't really use that. That plus five melee defense is of course kind of cool. Very defensive, it's not offensive, so I would rather take something offensive. Overwhelm is extremely niche -ish. You can take this on a gunner maybe. Basically lowers the combat stats of everyone you hit. And every hit increases the effect. But this is gone the next turn. So let's say you don't act first, the enemies do, and then you hit them with overwhelm, and but they already acted that turn, so this doesn't do anything. Some enemies have this, some direwolves, you know, hyenas, like the frenzied one. Using this, I am not a big fan of that. Okay, you overwhelm somebody. Yeah, and then he maybe misses you once or twice. But you know who doesn't hit you? Somebody who is dead. So this is another example of having something that is defensive. Kind of sounds cool, but then I would rather chop somebody's head and overwhelm him two, two times, and then he maybe doesn't hit me. So it doesn't really make sense to me. Lomovis could be an amazing perk. You get plus 15% of all your combat stats if you're three or more tiles away from anyone else. Pets, like dogs, they don't count, so that's fine. I could see using this once on tanks that just go in front of your whole team and then just stand there and tank. The one monolith tank should have this. He really needs this. He won't have as much melee defense as possible. But other than that, I mean, you're kind of always near to your bros when you want to protect each other. You have some synergies sometimes, you know, Vanguard and Rogue. For that, it doesn't really make sense because this never gets procced. But for this one tank, it's a cool thing. It makes that tank very strong. Underdog is a thing that I I use this basically for every melee bro that I have. <laughs> every tank has this. Every melee bro that gets into combat. Because, you know, it's pretty often the case that somebody gets swarmed by enemies. And this is often the time when you just get killed. This makes your bro survive a lot more. This is a huge defensive perk. And this helps in situations where you really need help. Great perk. I always have this on every tank. Every melee bro I can bake it in. Very offensive bros. Like he, for example. He doesn't really need it. Because everything he's in melee with, he will absolutely murder anyway. So they rarely hit back. Footwork. I use this in two situations. My Hawkeye is a bow user that maybe goes around like the flanks and try to snipe Hexen or, or Necromancer. Or sometimes some enemy break out and try to involve you into melee and there's something you don't want. So you get free. And the other situation is if you have a Bannerman, 
He's absolutely amazing. You don't need this. He all the stats are absolutely crazy, and you just don't know what to do with that dust perk. Take this. Sometimes you get into melee. You can just jump out of this. But I mean, if you play correctly, you should never use this unless you have again a ranged bro that sometimes get into melee. This happens. Sometimes you know there's a, a walk that just breaks out and just jumps on your range bro then you can just go away that is of course kind of cool but other than that i don't use this berserk berserk is uh, in theory an absolutely amazing thing if you kill something you get extra points back so you can most of the time swing again it's a very offensive perk this is a great thing to have if you have a bro who actually has the fatigue to support this you know, having a day taller with 80 fatigue and you never level this, you just don't have the fatigue to use it. This could sometimes be, like for him for example, he will be shooting, sometimes he kills something and then he will use those AP to reposition himself. This could sometimes be a strategic use. But it's just a great perk for for fighter who actually have the fatigue to support this. If they don't, they just... This is just absolutely wasted. Headhunter. Not great. I sometimes use this on bow user on this hawk I built that just, you know, shoots at enemies and hoping I get a headshot and then I aim shot on that target I really want to kill because headshots do more damage. You can maybe make a build of a flail user, right, that always hits the head and then the next attack hits the head too, even though you don't spend the fatigue. Kind of cool, but then it's, it's a whole perk. And maybe in the earlier stages this could be a cool build, but this is not an early stage. This is an endgame perk, so... Nimble is, for your Nimble Bros, an absolute must. It makes that if your fatigue use of your helmet and your armor is not higher than 15, you only get 40% of the initial damage onto your HP. So that means if you have very low armor, you tank with your HP, which is absolutely fine. This is especially early on, pretty strong. And Battleforge, I just do them together, is if you have very heavy armor like tanks or your classical two-handed wielding bros, you just get less damage. It's a percentage, 5% of your armor just makes them more tanky. Both are fine, both are absolutely usable. For some bits, it just makes more sense. But it's not the case that only one of those is great or not. Again, you can clear the whole game with either. Just like a question of, do you want to have a dodgy bro who doesn't get hit as much, but when he gets hit, he tanks with his HP? Or do you want to have somebody who basically never dodges <laughs> and has just a lot of HP and just can tank hits? Okay, to the last row. If you're still awake, <laughs> Fearsome. I think Fearsome is one of the strongest perks in the game. I feel that people who don't like this extremely underestimate how powerful this is. But what Fearsome does, every time you make damage to somebody, and normally it, it has to be more than 15 HP damage, the person has to do a moral check. If the person misses the moral check, you see those, those, those flags like wavering, breaking, and something like this. And they get minus to their, to their combat stats. But what, what Fearsome does, it procs even when you only do 1 HP damage. This is not like a big deal, but the crazy part about this, the moral check that this enemy then has to do and the other dudes around him, it has a penalty to it. And the penalty is 20% of your current resolve and this is minus 10. It sounds way more complicated than it is. If you have 60 resolve, it's minus 10. If you have 50, it's minus 8. And this doesn't sound much, but... You proc fearsome a lot, like axes two times every swing, gunners five or ten times around. <laughs> every time you hit something, basically, you always proc this. If somebody has to do a moral check and he doesn't succeed in it, other enemies around have to do this thing too. So you just proc this, you just spin this wheel of resolve checking so much more and they all have a penalty. This really works, especially in the later stages. If you exploit this, they proc this so much, they, they, they throw three times. And this is like on top of like killing people, doing damage in general, right? Killing higher value targets. This is all on top of all of this. When you want to see big orc camps routing at 50% of the fight, and this perk does this. This is very strong. Maybe you know, say, you know what, hey, but they don't work against undead. Yeah, but guess what? Undead are the more easier fights. You don't really need anything to do that. 
Maybe Black Monolith is a different story and, and Sunken Library, but generally speaking, fighting against very strong enemies, the humanoids, the chosen orcs, right? Having this just makes those fight way easier. You just kill way faster because there are more enemies routing. And even if you don't, this is a very crazy debuff. Wavering or breaking, every one of those stages debuffs the enemy with minus 10% to your combat stats, which mean they just dodge less, they just hit worse. So you make more damage even there. This is a very offensive perk. Uh, this thing is absolutely amazing. I, I love this. You know, maybe I do a challenge one where I don't take this, but... Holy crap, this is amazing. Crazy perk, but I stopped talking about this now. Pick this on anyone you can. The higher you resolve, the better. Duelist is great. What Duelist does, you ignore more armor with your attacks. And this only works with one-handed weapons and throwing weapons. Two-handed weapons like pikes, big cleavers, guns, don't do this. It even works if you have this in your offhand. It still works. It's great to do massive amounts of damage. It's a very strong damage increase. And for the builds, he uses this, you know, he, for example. If you have those bros who use one-handed weapons or thrower, then take this perk. Killing Frenzy is mostly used with Berserk in conjunction. There's like two rounds, you get more damage, which is cool, but you have to kill. I would probably always use this in combination with this, you know, because then you kill more, this procs often. I have a mod, if I kill somebody, they have red glowing eyes. I really like this, it's pretty cool, so I can see who has this up. This is a big damage increase, you really feel this. And I have this on all my throwers, and probably all my gunners too. If you can proc this reliably and you have the bro that can support this with enough fatigue, this is a no-brainer. This is one of the most satisfying perks ever. This and this combined, it's it's just fun. And Indom, Indomable makes you immune to stuns, to knockbacks, and you get 50% le less damage. This perk is pretty expensive. It's 25 fatigue every round, that's pretty crazy. But there are some fights where you have to use that. So every of my tanks has this. You put your bro in front of orcs, in front of unholds. This is something you really have to have for the later stages. The unholds just run around and, and kicking people around the place and you won't prevent this. And the sun from the orcs, they just charge you and just doesn't do anything. This is very useful for later stages of the game, the big fights. You absolutely want to have this on your tanks. And what you do with your tanks later on, you're basically just standing there, tank three or four enemies, and you spam in Dom. I would do this over Shield Wall. I feel this is stronger, it costs more, yes, but you're so tanky, you have so much HP, so much armor, and this is reduced by 50%, it just doesn't do much. Great defensive perk, all of my tanks have this, and you use that for endgame fights, but this is the only use I have for this perk. All right, those were all the perks. How you level bros. I mean, you can just pick a build guide and just do this. But there are, I would say, three categories how you would start to level a bro. You just have to ask yourself, will that bro be defensive or offensive? And then you ask yourself, where is he? Is he in the front line or is he in the back? Let's say you have this, right? This is an offensive bro. He's in the back line. My first pick is student because he's safe. He levels more, I can be greedy. Afterwards, I would always take Gifted to just boost up his stats. Then the build kind of becomes, you know, what actually is this? But this doesn't really matter what he is and what he does. You take those anyways. If he is offensive, he's in the back line. Oh, say, he takes student Gifted. Crazy. Is he defensive and he's in front? Then you always take this first. Colossus... Sometimes when they are very, very weak in the earlier stages, you actually take nine lives. But I think you get the idea. You take something defensive because this is a defensive bro, or you want to protect the bro from dying. I mean, you want to protect all your bros from dying, but this is just like a general idea. I would give all the bros in the front in the beginning and tanks always Colossus first. It doesn't matter. At level 3, every one of my bros get gifted just to boost them up. Then the question of what this bro should be. A better man, you would level him probably a bit different after level 4 or 5 than, than a thrower, right? And a vanguard is something else than a row. This is a question you can't answer without going into a lot of detail. Should this bro survive and is in the front line, you pick 
Colossus and Gifted. First, they're absolutely necessary. Is this bro in the back? Then you take Student and Gifted. This is basically just for the first two, three level. You always pick the same stuff. But this video was long enough. <laughs> if you have any questions, just let me know. As I mentioned in the other videos, I gather all the questions I get. I make Q&A video then at the end to clear out even the last questions that could come up. Maybe you think one of those perks is way better than I give them credit. Or you maybe think Fearsome sucks and you want to want to tell me about it, then just do that. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> I love having discussions about Battle Brothers. What is cool? What isn't? What do you take? What you shouldn't take? Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you find this useful. My philosophy behind this. Killing is better than debuffing and being reliable is better than gambling, in my opinion. I wish everyone a great day, whatever you do, wherever you are right now, of course. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.